Welcome to Talking Baseball. We're talking wild boars, the Nationals signing up every infielder out there, and the White Sox grabbing every Cuban. Quinn's got some pitchers and some more. Let's do it. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to Talking Baseball, another episode in which Jake and I We'll talk about baseball, Major League Baseball, maybe some Little League, maybe some college. I haven't discussed it with Jake. I don't know what he wants, but I thought we were just going to do just Major League Baseball. I guess I will throw it to you. What do you want to talk about today? Well, Mike McCarthy just gets hired as the Cowboys coach. No, we don't talk. You're a son of a bitch. Did he really? Yeah, yeah, I did. See, <laughs> don't you be interested. It just happened. Um, cool. Mike McCarthy got hired by the Cowboys instead of the Giants. That's kind of fun. Um, so, but we don't talk football on this podcast. We talk baseball, Jim, and it's it's good to be back, man. We uh, we got caught in like a a four week whirlwind between winter meetings and the Honda days, and I uh, wish I lived in the, the golden, golden age, age living it up on the Broadway stage. Some of us had our teeth removed, so it's been it's been kind of chaos for four weeks. So it's good to be here on a Monday a.m. ready to talk baseball. baseball. Yeah, talking baseball. I feel like we haven't done it. I feel like we haven't done like what we do since before winter meetings, and like we busted our ass at winter yeah. meetings, and we've been rolling out some interviews more on talking Yanks, and we have done episodes. But like, I'm so excited, like Monday morning, let's do an app. Let's get back to the grind. I loved the holidays. Now I'm sitting here like, fuck you holidays. You made me stop doing talking baseball as much as I like. That's I'm, I'm retroactively yeah, it's mad kind at them. Of retroactively. It's like a, yeah, it's like a transaction player to be named later. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's, I, I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting to get it going again and yeah, winter meetings kind of worked out for us really well because we both oh, kind of had a lot no. of stuff planned around the holidays. Um, so we got to drop a lot of our interviews and stuff, and we still got more. But uh, uh, there's live stuff to talk about, I guess. Is that the phrase? That is the phrase. And as we say this on Monday, we are doing this. But on Wednesday, we are going to L.A., uh, to do some business meetings and cover some events, and we are hosting our own live event. So I guess that will be our Monday show or our Wednesday show. The later in the week will be our live event. If you are in LA and around the Santa Monica area, come out. There's a uh, we are we will be with Trevor Plouf, been on the show before. Jack Flaherty, zero point nine three ERA in his last sixteen games last season. He's pretty good. He'll be sitting down with us. We'll having some beers at Santa Monica Brew Works. That's next Monday, right? Next Monday. Wednesday we fly out. Next Monday is that show. So we're, I think Thursday we fly out. Maybe you. Oh, it's Thursday the 9th? I don't know. I don't make the schedules. See? Yeah. So, all right. We'll talk about some of anyway, that stuff. Anyway, Monday but the yeah, 13th. Dates. Come out if you live in Santa Monica. Boom. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. We, uh... We were kind of nervous. We were going to do, like, a John Boy and Jake event at a brewery, and we are like... I don't know, like maybe people show up and that'll be cool and we'll drink a beer with them. And then we're like, oh, should we invite Ploof? And we're like, that'll probably bring our attendance down. <laughs> um, and then we're like, let's let's reach out. And uh, so, yeah, Flaherty's going to come through. And I think there's going to be like other baseball dudes hanging out because uh, we're, we're supposed to see some at a charity event. So I, I don't know. It's kind of unbelievable that it's happening. But if you're... Uh, if you're somehow in the L.A. area uh, next Monday, it's going to be right after the college football uh, championship game, which I was wondering if that was a good thing or a bad thing for us. I think it's a good thing. I don't care. I think people go out and be like, hey, we'll watch the game and then we'll watch these idiots. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see. First live show we're ever going to do. So we, it's no cost, free to get in, but get a ticket on Eventbrite so we can have a head count. See if I start gagging like D from Always Sunny due to stage fright. And uh, I don't know. It'll be very interesting. If you go, you'll be like, I was. This is your first, this is your first stage fright test since blank. Like college, talking in front of a classroom. Okay. And you did that. Yeah, but I would just look directly at the teacher and just have like a one-on-one conversation 
take everyone else out of the room. That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to talk to me, Trevor, and Flash. <laughs> Don't call him that. I won't. Okay, thank God. Jake, there's been a lot of fun news. It's been a lot of signings. Yeah. We're getting to the end of the signings, but then I still looked, and there's a ton still out there, so maybe we're not. But we're, but we're right. at such a better place than we are last year. Like The people that are left unsigned, you're like, yeah, okay, they'll sprinkle those guys in at the end. And then I was looking, and I wanted to do a fun game that I think is zero fun. I was looking at all the free agents that are still left and wondering, how many of these don't get a job? And I was like, oh. Ooh, <laughs> that's because I was like, that's I was like some of these let's, guys like probably not. aren't wanted, and that's mean. But I don't want to open the show up with meanness. I want to open the show up with funness, and I want to talk about the Cespedes Boar incident. Well, yeah. Let me let me comment on that before we open up with Boar talk, like we normally do on Talking Baseball. I think there's still there's still a tier of guys that are going to get major league contracts. Um, I think what I want to call it, though, what you're talking about, it's the Brad Miller line. Brad Miller, every year, finds himself looking for a baseball team or with a spring training invite or in AAA, and then that team ends up being like, well, the fans of that team start talking themselves into Brad Miller. Jimmy, Brad Miller's 30 years old. Um, he's played all over the infield. He's a lefty hitting infielder that always finds his way in a team, but he just can't get like a, Hey, two years for one and a half million. That's just not going to happen. So I think I'm going to call that my Brad Miller line, but we still got a few guys above that. I, th I think our guy, Todd Frazier's above that. Yeah. Um, yeah. He maybe Jason Kipnis, Alex Gordon, but y you are right. It it's getting thin. The only true impact guy left is Donaldson, which we'll talk about. And then Ozuna and Castellanos are still fun. After that, it gets pretty dire. It gets like minor league invite, like Matt Harvey, Greg Bird. Um, is Pedro Strop going to get a sign somewhere? Or is he going to get a minor league invite? Uh, Neil Walker. You love Pedro Strop. Uh, you know, David Phelps, Fernando Rodney. What are what's happening? There's with still these guys? a couple in between. Eric Thames, Hunter Pence. So I mean, there's a couple. Yeah, Hunter Pence had a great. I yeah. don't know how Hunter Pence's year ended, but he had a great first half for the Rangers. After after Donaldson, Ozuna, and Castellanos, none of the other guys you can go. Puig. If you don't already Puig. have a it, Puig, if you don't already have a winning off season, you can't add anyone else and be like, now I think. You know what? Now that we brought in Hunter Dozier, or Brian Dozier, excuse me, Hunter, he did a lot for the Royals. Let's talk about Boars. So Cespedes got injured, fractured his ankle. They do the whole dispute of his contract, and neither side really like goes hard because I read both sides thought they were going to lose. <laughs> like, so they <laughs> both went like pretty unconfident. Like, let's just meet on the middle because I don't think either of us have solid ground. And the middle was Cespedes losing $20 million. The, but the one thing they all agreed on, Jake, was that the accident happened from stepping into a hole on the ranch after being chased by a wild boar. I agree. I actually think the term was like he tried to sidestep a wild boar. Cespedes. Right. Vice had this video on Cespedes and his ranch from 2017. And in it, I tweeted it, they showed him setting up his wild boar traps, which weren't too elaborate. They were kind of home alone-ish. No. It was, you put a bucket of feed, and then when the boar knocks the bucket, a string latches a gate. But 300-pound boars in the gate that I was looking at, like, that's just going to break through it. So maybe that's what happened. In, in 2017, he had trapped three already. One was 300 pounds. Half of it's like, should players be allowed to live their lives? You know, like, should like Aaron Boone be allowed to play pickup basketball? Should Barry Zito be allowed to surf on his off days? But then I also get like, hey, dude, you just got injured doing something dumb. So now we're going to take back some money. Like, I get both sides of it. But it is funny that it's a bore. The boar part is funny. Um, back to the life part a little bit. I mean, yes, guys can live their life, but when your livelihood is built on 
Ioannis Cespedes having healthy legs so he can earn his $25 million a year playing baseball, I think the Mets do have a right to be like, hey, man, you're going to have to save your boar trapping days till after you play. And I'm sorry, Got- and I know that hurts you, um, but <laughs> I... And you know it's uh, would would you want a Yankees pitcher who is a really good, I don't know, quarterback to play football in the off season? Like no, and then I'm he a comes selfish out with an but, arm season. No, but I'm a selfish fan. Do you remember like Barrazito? The Giants said he wasn't allowed to surf when he went to the Giants, and yeah. then people were like he was bad, and they were like, well, it's because he can't surf. That's like his therapy. I, I mean, a, probably a dumb storyline, but I was like, that's interesting that they put it in the contract. You're not allowed to surf, but I also get it. Do you think you could trap? Yeah, and a I, I think as we millennial up, oh yeah. I I mean, I I saw your your video of Vice's video of Yoannis's, uh setup, and I mean, I could rig that. I mean that that looked like I rigged that. Yeah, that looked like they they put six poles, they put like a twine fence around the poles and they had an entry for the boar to hopefully enter and then yeah, home alone style drop the gate. Um cuz cuz yeah, I I could I I didn't listen to I did you put audio over it or did you just straight put the vice thing on there cuz I didn't listen with audio, but I I knew we were having the same thought process because I mean when they when they showed the gate you're like, oh, you're trying to trap a boar in here. This is, yeah, uh, maybe they're smart animals, but they're also just stronger than the fence you're putting up. Yeah, no, I didn't add audio. I mean, it was Cespedes talking about trapping boars was the audio. Right. Yeah. And, hey, everyone's got to have a hobby. Later in the video, right, and- later in the video, Jake, he climbs a tree, like, really high. Just, like, very, like, scales it like Spider-Man. And Evan from Evan Roberts from WFAN like quote tweeted and he was like, What about the tree? <laughs> like that's just as ridiculous. Yeah. Like, don't be climbing trees. Don't be trapping boars. Come on. I don't know, maybe it's his zen. Well. Yeah, and I I mean it does lead into a whole 2020 type conversation where you mention if Barry Zito, if he clears his head out on a surfboard. Um, the wild boar thing again, still a little more complicated than that. IMO. Um, playing basketball, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, man. Like we, we've said this a couple times now, almost kudos to the Mets. Cause like you said, you found yourself on both sides of the argument and somehow the Mets and Cespit is both left the room with a firm handshake and ready to move on, which, um, I don't know if you look at Mets history, Normally, this would not be the conversation we'd be having, and it would be, wow, the Mets and Cespedes are in a gunfight, <laughs> and you're like, whoa. <laughs> I, 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 I'm on the side of he shouldn't be trapping boars, but anyone that's like, well, dude, what if like are, they, are players not allowed to have like hobbies? Like In the video, it's not about trapping boars. He loves his ranch, and the boars eat all the seed that he plants and fuck with his ranch, so he needs to trap them. Right. But, like, hire a guy. Hire a guy to do that part. Right. Yeah, you know, because you make a million. Year. You make. I'll be the boar trapper. Pay the cesspit as barbecue guys, and they will do it. <laughs> yeah, it was a good call, Jake. I Not mean, you. Yeah, I Jake. mean, yes, could yes, we could do that, James. But they kind of get dibs on that. <laughs> yeah, I was saying the other Jake should do it. Not you. Right, 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 right. I, I, I want to know, did he successfully sidestep the boar? Or like once he was in the hole, did the boar have its way with Cespedes? Like did he get got? Or did the boar like see him fall in the hole, fracture his ankle, and like, okay, sympathy, like I, I just got you, did a little boar laugh and walked on its merry way. Ooh, that's interesting. See, I think, I think the boar got in there a little bit, and I think maybe there's footage of it. And that's why Yo-Yo was so comfortable giving up $20 million because he was like, hey, I'll give up the $20 million, but this video of the boar and me doesn't leave the room. What if, and they're like, that's fine. I, what I'm wondering is, is the hole he stepped in another boar trap? Because that'd be funny. If he was the boar made Yoannis step in his own boar trap. That's why I was watching the video. I was hoping for that, and he didn't point to 
uh, a whole boar trap. I don't know. When you're trying to trap humans and boars, it's kind of a different process for me. So I don't think so. Okay. Um, but there's a chance. I watched a video on on Reddit the other day of uh, uh, pigeon trapping when people people grow pigeons and then train them to steal yeah. other pigeons. Yeah. That was interesting. It wasn't nearly as cool as I thought it was going to be. Can do anything you want in this world, James. Get, 2020. You just got to put your mind to it. Should I play a sound effect and we move on to the next topic? Yeah, play the next topic sound effect. Okay. You couldn't hear it, but it played. The, na- it. the Nationals, Jake. The Nationals did a yeah. lot. Did a lot up until your, the, uh, your defense. Defending World Series champion Nationals. Yeah, up until now, the Nationals had just brought back guys that were already on the team. They brought back Strasburg. They brought back Kendrick, right? Correct. They did lose out on Rendon, so they they lost him. And then Zimmerman, they have an opening at first base. Jan Gomes. Jan Gomes. Yeah, they have an opening at first base. They signed, I think the order of the events were, first they signed Will Harris, which is the first guy that they're bringing to them that wasn't with them last season. So he's the first outsider to join the World Series champions. He's most famous for, at this point, helping the Nats win the World Series with that low and in fastball to Howie in the World Series. So uh, it's like a tough pill to swallow, but it really just... (laughs) Like money speaks, and they offered him a three-year contract for twenty-four million dollars, and I I read the three years was what Will Harris really liked, so that makes sense. He wants more money. It's a little odd that he goes to the team that just beat him. I think like back in nineteen sixties baseball, they'd be like, "What the hell?" But now we kind of understand, like, well, that's how it works. If you are a Houston teenager and you hate Will Harris. I get it. <laughs> I get that. Right. If you're like, um, and, don't know how to control your emotions and you one, yes. you hate Will Harris because he allowed the go ahead home run in the world series or tying, whatever it was. And then B he signs with that team. And now you have to see him in that uniform. Yes. Yeah. If you're a 14 year old in Houston, you probably, you can hate Will Harris just a little less than you hate me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is, this is the same thing when the Red Sox won the World Series. They re-signed Steve Pierce, the World Series MVP. They re-signed Evaldi. This is the Nationals. They re-signed Will Harris. It's a sentimental um, signing, you're saying. Hey, you helped us win the World yeah, Series, you know, so we'll throw you some cash. It's a little IOU. Um, <laughs> yeah, made made that joke on Twitter. A couple people got it. Um but yeah, I think the Nationals they were looking for they were looking for a lefty reliever and they quickly found out that there isn't really a lefty reliever market, but Will Harris has great numbers against lefties. So they add him to the bullpen. Um and there are some really good articles about them. I'm I'm not going to give proper credit, so I won't even quote them. Uh but look up Will Harris signing with the Nationals cuz they said the <laughs> the process was pretty weird because this has never happened. <laughs> um and uh, I think Will Harris had a good quote out there that he's like, yeah, that's uh, that's the only time I plan on giving up a home run in a Game 7 of a World Series. Uh, so it was pretty awkward to talk to that team. Uh, but yeah, you're right. They get the third year. Um, Will Harris became a total kind of wild card and overlooked this free agency. We talked about there not being a ton of free agents. He's 35, but he's clearly figured something out. A lot of guys in Houston did. Um, three years. And do he's you, really three, good against three years for a 35 year old reliever. I know that he's good, and I think he has a really good track record of not being injured. But I understand why no other team did that. And Nats, even though they won the World Series, they are desperate for bullpen, and uh, they did it. But. I mean, it's probably not going to work out the best. Well, it's it's interesting, and if you're national sports radio, you're probably talking about, I mean, another wild card reliever who's out there is Daniel Hudson, who had such a good playoffs for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, Will Harris, he had a 1-5 ERA last year in 60 innings. Um, he doesn't have a ton of mileage on his arm because uh, he's never been like the goat on his garm. 
Uh, he's never been the go-to guy in a bullpen. He has under 400 career major league innings. So uh, th- there's a chance that he doesn't have the same mileage that a 35-year-old reliever would have. Um, you are, you're hoping to get two good years out of Will Harris, and that's kind of the contract. Yes, I do want to say I didn't want my last sentence to be taken the wrong way. I, I don't think the third year, the odds the third year works out aren't good. First and second, sure, good signing. That's what, that, and that's kind of the that's that's where we're at in free agency, and that's what our our guy Josh Donaldson is doing. He's <laughs> Josh Donaldson's just sitting on a beach right now, saying, first one to go five years wins, babe." And they're all saying, "Don't do it, don't, don't do, do it,", it. Don't and waiting do it. for one one crazy owner to crack. Yeah, well, the Nationals most likely don't need Donaldson. They're still in. They're still the one of the two teams in on Donaldson. They're interested. But if they don't get him, they sign some backup. First, they signed Starlin Castro for $12 million, two years, and I think a lot of Nationals fans were saying, oh, okay, he's going to be our new uh, – um, he's going to be our new Asdrubal Cabrera. He'll be the second baseman, infielder, and then they sign Asdrubal Cabrera. So then they're like, wait, what? What's going on now? They also have this dude, Carter Keyboom, who's a big-time prospect, middle infielder, so now they're they're kind of stocked up. I believe it's going to be Castro's going to be their starting second baseman and as Drubal's 100% utility infielder if everyone's healthy. I think that's how because they signed as Drubal Cabrera for no money. Right, 2.5 I believe. Um but I I think and Jim, I'm I'm gonna do Jakey Cross Sports comparison a little bit slash just modern day baseball. Like, it's still kind of an old way of thinking. Like when the Yankees signed DJ LeMahieu last year, he technically didn't have a position. DJ LeMahieu didn't start opening day for the Yankees, but you knew he was gonna play a buck forty games. Um, I I think all of these guys are currently in that role. Maybe, uh, you know, it, it's given them a little bit of a liability if one of those dudes has a bad year. It's crazy how good Ass Crabs was for the Nationals in his time there. Same with Howie Kendrick. Howie Kendrick was nuts last year. Uh, Starlin Castro, you wonder, I mean, do the Nationals have either a hitting process or a hitting coach where they can find something? Because Starlin still loves the game. I, I know you and I were blown away that he played 162 for the Miami Marlins last year. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can find a little pop in his bat or maybe just being around a winning team brings out a little more. But what they have right now is options. Um, if, if someone gets hurt or if someone's hot, they can figure it out. It will be interesting. I mean, if they are the ones that land with Donaldson, I, I don't think they're planning on that right now. <laughs> um, cause you're right now, now, if you do that, you might be stunning a prospect's growth. You might have an angry veteran on your team, uh, so interested, I I like it. It when when you look at Kendrick and Estrubal Cabrera, like those guys had to sign with the Nats. <laughs> they had to. Uh, Jake. Yeah, I like this. I like Starlin Castro, and he gets so much shit. The guy's twenty nine years old. He feels like he's thirty nine. He's been in the league for so long. Yeah. I was. I felt bad for him. He's been on the Marlins for the last two years. Now, I know that he's not a stellar player. But what Starlin Castro is, is consistently average to slightly above average baseball player. Every year. Last year, he played 162 games on the Miami Marlins. He played 162 games on the Miami Marlins. Give him a contract just for that. Reward him. His, his, he's he's he, a four time all star. I know I know all star games can can be a joke, but Starlin Castro is a four time all star. Um, I, and my my cross sport comparison that I I was gonna make Jim, which I don't know, it might fall on deaf ears with you a little bit, but I was gonna compare the Nationals to the Toronto Raptors, both teams that just won the title. Um, the Raptors kind of won the title by having Kawhi. And then just everyone could make an open shot. <laughs> so if you double team, they just they had someone open. That's kind of what the Nats did. They had Soto and Rendon. Now they still have Soto. Um, they might add another big bat, but they have guys who give you major league at bats. There's not really a hole in their lineup, um, and and that's kind of what the Nationals have. They have a bunch of major leaguers. Yeah, yeah, it's a good call. 
And and that's what they did last year. They were the team doing things opposite of everyone else. They were the oldest team. They put the ball in play the most. They had the most bunts and all that good shit. Starling Castro, career OPS plus, 100 is average, is 98. So that's slightly below. But he has one outlier season at 73, which is really bad in 2013. His last four years, he's got a 94 OPS plus last year, 102, 106, 93. So he just hovers right around that average baseball player, which you're not going to go to the Hall of Fame. You're not going to go to any more all-star games. You're not going to be really like celebrated. But to be an average baseball player 10 years in a row, that's pretty cool. Better than a lot of guys that play the game. I think he gets shit on too much. You get, you get skewed. Well, it gets skewed, Jim. It's expectations. Yeah. It was my word of 2019. I have to find a new one for 2020. Expectations. Um, but, I mean, the the guy was a 22-year-old two-time All-Star, and you, <laughs> you start talking Hall of Fame and stuff like that, and Starlin Castro is not that dude, but he's a solid ball player. Solid ball player. Ball player. It's all we wanted. <laughs> that ends the Nationals talk. Wow. And now we move on. Oh, I have this next. The league has issued Domingo Herman an 81 game suspension. The suspension is retroactive to last September, meaning Herman will sit the first 63, game, 63 games of 2020. It's the harshest punishment MLB has given for domestic abuse or domestic violence. I don't know the correct phrase. I think the MLB and the Yankees both handled this situation well. They didn't leak it. They didn't play it the wrong way. We are completely in the dark as to what actually happened, how many times it happened, any, all of that. I think that's good. It should be an internal issue. I don't really have anything to say because we don't know exactly what happened. Although Domingo Herman, kind of a bad guy. Hopefully, from this, he can slowly become a, a, a better guy and learn his lesson. Who knows? Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. It's a really tough situation because he will be playing again. He's a young, controllable arm, and he will start again. And if he does well, people will clap for that result. I mean, I, I, I don't think you can clap for the person unless they really show signs of improvement and, like, genuinely turned a new leaf uh but i think you know you will people will clap for the result if he goes out there and pitch as well and then people will have a problem for that i think uh all, all i have to say is i think mlb and the yankees handled this situation well taking them out of the the team right away doing a full lengthy investigation not spilling any of the details and then dealing with it seems like he complied everyone complied domingo herman bad guy don't abuse people. Yeah, and it's uh, obviously it's a, always a little bit of a tricky conversation, um, a little bit. But he he did he did something bad, like you said. We don't know the details of that. Not well, they matter to a degree, but not that they should. But he 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 did a bad thing. Um, I think it was like the what the third or fifth longest suspension they've given out. Um, for domestic violence, something something along those lines, and it's uh, it it comes back to my my kind of going away line on this. It 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 leaves it leaves the baseball field, and it determ it it comes back to you and however you feel about this. I mean, there's there are some people that feel firmly that if you are a professional athlete, you don't deserve a second chance at at anything. You should be. If you have any domestic violence, you are not you are no longer to play baseball. And I can't tell you that stance is wrong. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Um what the Yankees are going to do or uh wherever Domingo Herman ends up, I mean they are going to follow Major League Baseball's guidelines. These are the rules that they have set up and maybe they'll get uh, adjusted in the CBA, maybe they won't. Um but yeah, I mean, it, it, it ends up becoming a personal thing. It's do you, do you believe in second chances? Do you believe in people can change? Uh, like you were saying, does any of this, does not that it makes it right, but if Domingo Herman, you know, gives back to charity and does charity work and gives speeches trying to change people, it doesn't make what he did better, but does it in your mind make him allowed to play baseball 
and still pursue that career and his his only profession that he's known up to this point in his life it it becomes a little bit of a personal thing so it's it kind of look look yourself in the mirror and what do you think tweet at us don't don't uh all right don't tweet at us about that true for other things yeah not a fun conversation I think it was handled the right way. Even Herman, besides going, he went on Instagram live at one point in the middle of all this. And was like, dude, don't fucking yeah. do that. But he takes a suspension. He's been going to rehab or classes. <laughs> hey, how to be a good person. If you do something that makes someone else get hurt or feel shitty, don't do it. I mean, you know, some people aren't taught life lessons, Jake, and it's a bizarre thing. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> a quick one. The Angels have agreed to a one year. $6.85 million deal with catcher Jason Castro. So many catchers on the market. The uh, Angels catchers last year were putrid. I think they like had the worst uh, like WRC, OPS, everything from the catching position than any other team. So they needed someone. I don't know if uh, Jason Castro's the answer because check this out. I was... <laughs> But the catching position is so bad in baseball. People don't realize that. Why, like, when a catcher can hit, why it's so celebrated. Jason Castro has been in the league for nine years, Jake. He's started over 100 games. One, two, three, four, five times. He started 80 last year, 87. So what I'm saying is the dude has been catching a lot. So he can't be that bad, comparable to the rest of the league, to continuously be catching he put up his <laughs> best season of his career with the bat last year. And the slash line is a 232 batting average, a 332 on base percentage, a 767 OPS, 101 OPS plus. Best of his career. And the dude is a catcher for going on a decade getting regular at bats. That's how bad the catching position is at hitting baseballs. But good for Castro. He gets signed. Yeah, and he, he's real. He's really good with the glove. And he he comes from the Twins, Jimmy, where Mitch Garver was, and the now guy respected as a catching guru that Tanner Smith left to go to the New York Yankees. Um, you know he he made Mitch Garver, and you know it. This is kind of unfair to Mitch Garver because he's kind of got a Midwest name that you can emphasize points with. But he made Mitch Garver into a Gold Glove. Uh, silver slugger catcher. Um, and yeah, I mean, Jason Castro, Jim, you mentioned the numbers. Uh, he can't touch lefties. Last year, he had a 125 batting average against lefties. He is a lefty, if you didn't know. Hitting, he throws righty. I'm looking for a lefty catcher in 2020, by the way. I'm so done with only righty catchers. We'll get there in a little bit. Uh, but Jim, against right-handed pitchers, 73 games, 254 batting average, 354 on base, and 851 OPS. That is really good for um, a, a against right-handed pitching for a catcher. Uh, so I love it. Um, you know, again, people thought I hated the Angels just because I hated the Dylan Bundy trade. You hate the Angels. Um, I I love the Jason Castro signing for them. Um, and yeah, there's still a... There still are a couple other catchers on the market. He was, um, on my fan graph sheet I've been going off of, he was expected to tie with Robinson Chirinos for this, uh, the second most money gotten by a catcher. Obviously, Yasmani Grandal in first. Um, but yeah, Chirinos is still out there. He's the one that's still a wild card. Russell Martin and Luke Roy are, are kind of the the real catchers that are still out there. So who's going to be the backup then? Is it going to be Max Stassi? Because they have they had Ben Boom last year. Uh, ben Boom's a lefty though. So if you're saying that uh, Castro is going to be a platoon catcher or should be a platoon catcher, Ben Boom's a lefty hitter as well. Max Stassi's the righty. Max Stassi last year got traded to the Angels halfway through, and I mean it was just like terrible. Like I mean. Yeah, he was terrible. They had Jonathan LaCroix, who, uh, you know, former former All-Star. Was he, or am I just speaking out of my butt? Yeah, two-time All-Star. Good for you, Jonathan LaCroix. Good for you, Jake. Um, he's still a... F Good for me, Jake. Um, he's still a free agent. I mean, does does he want to come into the bad side of a platoon? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I, I think you've got a nice piece... Um, 
with with the signing and if the A's want if the Angels want to go out and sign another righty, they can. Or if they believe they have a right-handed hitting catcher that can hit off lefties, I I think you can be kind of comfortable with that position. Max Stassi is a righty, but he's worse versus lefty pitcher, so maybe he's not the best platoon guy. But I mean, is a backup catcher well, if they're doing a platoon, that's not really a backup catcher. But if you're the guy facing lefties, you're kind of a backup catcher. But a backup catcher isn't really known for splits. Having an inner dialogue here. Don't think anything that we just talked about matters is what I'm coming to. Yeah, and the the guy that I couldn't believe, they just released this guy. And when we saw him in May, he was batting cleanup for them. Uh, Kevin Smith. I mean, he's just kind of a guy, and this is we're getting deep tracks baseball. Um, but again, he crushed lefties last year and they just, I think they openly released him. Um, but if they could bring him back, I, I would enjoy that platoon, but Kevin um, Smith, that's deep Kevin with an A in Kevin. So you're not going to like that. Kevin. Is there, what is it? C- Kevin. Is it C A? No, that's Kevin. That's Biggio. Yeah. I can't find this dude on baseball reference. K E V A N. It's like Evan with a K in front of it. Wow. He did not come up. It is like Evan with a K in front of it. K Evan. That's what they should call him. Yeah, it's kind of good. Yeah. K Evan. Well, I don't. I, I finally got to his page, but I feel like we're over it. So I'm going to move on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's deep tracks catching. So. <laughs> More White Sox talk, Jake. I feel like we talk about them every episode, yes. uh, but they keep doing things. They keep making news. The White Sox have reached a long-term agreement with centerfield prospect Luis Robert. This is not the first time they've given a long-term deal to one prospect Luis Robert and two a guy in their system has never played in the major leagues before. So that's White Sox are doing their own thing. They the deal is uh, fifty million in guaranteed money over six years. This guy hasn't played in the MLB yet. It features two club options, meaning the max he can get is eighty eight over eight years. It's record setting for a player who hasn't debuted in the majors, uh, and it's the second contract he's signed with the White Sox because he was a Cuban international player and they signed him for twenty six million dollars a couple months into 2017 season to even get him into their system he's been raking in triple a having his way with the minors and now he gets a potentially an eight-year deal before even swinging a bat very interesting but they did it with Eloy Jimenez and I mean it helps them out it's team friendly in a way because well no they are taking a big risk but they can play him right away there's no service time manipulation. It's super good for this dude. If you're this guy, I'd sign this contract in a heartbeat. Um, and they don't have to do arbitration. They they skip all the shitty parts of a, of a team player relationship. And they just say, hey, we just want you to play ball for us. And we want to pay you to do so. But hasn't played yet. Yeah, it's there's there's going to be a lot of hot takes early on as people get their eyes on Luis Robert for the first time. It would be really nice for him to get off to a hot start. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, he he owes Eloy Jimenez and he owes Pete Alonso a, a nice little high five when he when he runs into him because uh those guys kind of set the tone and they they lived up to their early contract so far, which which has been good and yeah, man, I mean we this has been everything we've been saying about the White Sox. I mean, they've gone out and they they want to compete. And this turned into one of the final questions for the White Sox. It was, um, you know, are they are they going to hold back Luis Robert to start the season and then bring him up? There was rumors the day before he signed the contract that he was in trade talks for Nolan Arenado for the Rockies. So when he signed this, this was kind of the White Sox keeping the noise out. Um, it would have been a question all spring training. Um, even like the Arenado stuff probably would have gone till spring training. Um, they keep out that noise. They keep out the service time noise. And the dude's supposedly a stud. I think he's like a top five prospect on some rankings. I'm interested to see him. Um, I know uh, 
you're rightfully skeptic of prospects until they play at the major league level because this is a sport that you need to have that mentality. Um, I'm I'm interested, man. As the technology gets better, I mean, can we start projecting these guys more? Um, are we going to do these types of contracts until someone does fall on their face and then what happens? Um, but good for the White Sox and better for Luis Robert. And what were you doing, Ozzy Albies and Acuna, with your guys' contracts? Yeah, man, those are tough. No, I, I like this by the White Sox. Like I said, they need to go all in. And I also, what I, and I am overtly, over, overtly, overly skeptical of prospects as a person. Like, I'm just cynical in that way. But if the White Sox believe in him, what this contract does guarantees that they give him a shot. Like, they're not going to, like, give him a cup of coffee yeah. and then be like, nah, never mind. We're going to trade you or pass on you. This dude's going to get a full shot to be the best he can be. And that's pretty cool. Good job. The White Sox are done, dude. They're, they set. They got Eloy in left. They got this dude, Luis Robertson, center. Mazzara in right. They got Moncada at third. Anderson at short. Garcia at second. Abreu at first. Edwin at DH. Like, they're, they're good to go. They're ready for spring. They got Giolito, Keichel, Gonzalez, Lopez. Um, who else do they have that can round out their rotation? Kopech Co- should be coming back. Kopech. Dylan Cease. Carlos Rodon. So if you're a White Sox fan, I mean, you're, the rest of your January is going to be fucking boring because you're done. Uh, they're going to make up rumors. They're, they're going to pretend they're still on Nolan Arenado or something like that. Do, but, um, well, but do they have Jim, room I, I, to go? Do they have room to go get a reliever? Do they need relievers? Uh, sh- what team doesn't have room for a reliever? You know what I'm saying? Um, Jim, what, a, what about this, though? And this, what about this the is Nats? the risk that has been run. This is the risk that's being run that kind of hasn't happened with one of these guys yet. Uh, Jan Moncada, Go on. his teammate, yeah, um, got traded, the Chris Sale trade, big-time prospect. Moncada's first 211 games, so like a season and a half, uh, he had a 234 batting average, a 319 on base, a, 17, a 719 OPS, and he led the league in strikeouts one season. Last year, 2019, Moncada goes beast mode. I mean, he has a 915 OPS, 315 batting average. He's great. He's the Moncada that people thought he was. But <laughs> he didn't get crazy pressure on him because he didn't sign an $88 million contract. So it's going to be interesting to see, Luis Robert, how ready he is because if he has the first two seasons Moncada had, White Sox people are going to be down his throat. They're also not rebuilding anymore. Like Moncada, ha- Ma- Yon right. had that. I'm like, ah, there's no urgency to win now anyway, so figure it out. This dude's being dipped into a big contract and a team that wants to win immediately. So, yeah, fans might have a little less patience. But if you're White Sox fans, uh, be happy. This is, gonna, this is a nice squad that your, your uh, team has went out and put together. I like it. Good. Next. Boom. You want to do twins? Twins rounded out their rotation a little bit. Uh, they pick up uh, Rich Hill, a.k.a. Dick Mountain, and they picked up Homer Bailey, two fun names in baseball. I believe last episode we ended it with, like, the pitchers that were still remaining, and I was like, yeah, Homer Bailey and Rich Hill are still out there, and then boom, now they're not. They're on the twins. The twins also re-signed Oda Rizzi, and they still have Pineda, who was suspended, and they still have Berrios. Rich Hill, I think, is going to be recovering, and Pineda is still suspended, so they really have two spots open to start the season. So I was asking White Sox fans on Twitter, do you, you guys have prospects that you're going to fill that in? And a lot of them are like, yeah. Twins fans. Twins fans. I'm like, yeah, we have some but I still think they're going to try and go out and get another guy. So maybe, but they do get uh, Rich Hill and Homer Bailey. What were the contracts? We don't have them on the sheet here. Don't have them on the sheet. I can, can get it from Passan's tweet. I think they were, they were kind of incentive-laden, which I liked, because um, Rich Hill is coming off injury, so they, um, I mean, they're not sure when he's coming back or how much they're going to get out of him. 
Homer Bailey looked like a different cat when he went over to Oakland. Um, he's always going to have a bad stigma with him because he signed the giant contract in Cincinnati and then he was bad. Um, but we <laughs> we saw him a couple times for Oakland and he looked mean. I mean, he's got the Christian Bale look going on. He's pumping 95, 96. Um, so maybe his arm found a second life. Maybe the technology helped him find a second life. Um, the twins are, and I, I think now I'm copying, pasting from the, the passing tweet, um, but the twins are a really well-respected organization for how they're run currently, and I, I think both of these signings were, were pretty well-liked throughout baseball. Bailey gets $7 million, and Hill gets $3 million guaranteed. It can reach up to twelve if uh, he hits some incentive points, which I'm guessing will be how it, much you pitch. Being pitched. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, we're getting a lot of stopgap rotations built up. Like, I feel like we have a, a, a couple now. Like, he's our two one year contracts. Toronto has a weird rotation that they built. The Angels built one with Bundy and Tehran. Uh, but I mean, that's how free and she should work. But this doesn't make me change my outlook on the Twins rotation too much because I still think they're both a little coin flippy. Yeah, and I, I think if you're a Twins fan, you basically say you're paying $10 million for two guys and hoping one of them works. Um, I, 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 I think that's the way you look at it, um, and hopefully they can just give you innings. I mean, we know... Uh, you know, this is something a lot of casual fans struggle with, but even innings at a five ERA can still be useful innings. <laughs> if if Homer Bailey doesn't have his great stuff this year, but he could still you still throw you 140 innings, that's huge because that's 140 innings other guys aren't throwing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they look like. And yeah, I I, I wouldn't say the Twins. Uh, well, A, the Twins are in on Donaldson, which could be uh, an impact player for them. And then, I don't know, could they trade some pitch hitting for pitching? I don't know. Ivan Nova's still out there. Colin McHugh from Houston. Um, and then, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of other guys that you're just really taking a flyer on. But don't be shocked if, if one of those guys ends up in Minnesota. Go give Ivan Nova a one-year deal. Problem solved. Him and Pineda, they're back <laughs> You know that baseball savant page that has the bar with everyone's skill set? Yeah. And if it's like to the right side and it's in red, that means it's good. If it's to the left side, it's blue, that means yeah. it's bad. Ivan Nova ha doesn't have one red dot. Yeah, he's feeling it out. His peripherals are as ugly as you. You stared into the screen and then you said it. Okay. The show you. The show you, oh, you hated it. Bad take. Oh, it's like a really, really bad show. Objectively bad. You just have to know what you're getting into. I knew what I was getting into. I still horrible. Right. But I mean, s serial killers aren't going to have the same conversations that real humans have. I don't know what your point is there. We'll talk about it another time, I guess. Yeah. Terrible show. Your you takes nope. were bad. No, that was like a really bad show. So it's a one, solid show. Go watch it. You don't watch unless you like like really poorly written lifetime shows where everyone's character arc just changes at the last second at a snap of a finger. Then you'll enjoy it. Sorry you couldn't see what was coming, brah. Terrible, terrible. Speaking of not seeing what's coming, Kevin Plawecki to your Red Sox. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, this doesn't need to be talked about, right? You, no, but uh, I, I thought, A, in a half ironic way to cover our butts, we should mention it, so there's not a Sox fan out there that's like, hey, you didn't mention Kevin Pluecki, but also, um, it doesn't really deserve to be, so. You know, like, I don't have a take on this or any thoughts. I'd have to go look at No, like, shouldn't. Okay. Okay. I forget, did we mention Cole Calhoun last episode? That was my other no. Yep. Arizona dude through nice. and through. Excited about him. We're, we're confused about what Arizona West doing. Coast guy. I don't care about the Hall of Fame ba ballots at all, do you? 
Uh, no, they were. They all had to be submitted by the New Year's. Um, Larry Walker seems to be on the cusp. Kurt Schilling seems to be on the cusp. Either way, I think a lot of people are going to be mad. <laughs> um, that's why. That's why I guys, just like. I can't even yeah. dive into it because everyone is like, so polarized for kind of like. It's like you don't really like. You're not gonna. You're not really up in arms about this, right? Like, I feel like it's a lot of forced hot takes. By everyone. Oh, yeah. It's very 2020 Twitter. It's very 2020 Twitter. Um, that's, a, that's tough to say. Um, but, yeah, no, the Larry Walker people are going to freak out if Larry doesn't get in. Um, any of the steroids guys, if they get in and one doesn't. And then Kurt Schilling's hit it, hit it on multiple fronts. So it's, uh, it, it's going to be a fun one. Because he put the fake blood in his sock? Uh, just he's a bad guy, mostly. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. It's like Kurt Band Aids exists. Yeah. Band Aids are a well known thing. Right. Bandages. Those don't motivate the team. Athletic tape. No, they don't motivate. Those don't rally a city, Jim. No, I heard he licked his sock afterwards in front of in the middle of the dugout and said, "Ha ha 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 ha!" Wasn't blood. You've done that. So. Yeah. What of it? What a, that's what I'm saying. He's the, he's the shortstop. Colas leaves Cuba. <laughs> I'll let you run with this one. Uh, we have another international prospect that's going to get a ton of hype. His name is... Yeah. What's his full name? Oscar Colas? Octavian? They're calling him the, the Cuban Otani. What's his first name? He's 21 years old. He's from Cuba. He's been playing professional baseball in Cuba since he was 17. He went to Japan and played there and absolutely was amazing. He didn't pitch in Japan, but apparently he can throw 95 miles per hour. Uh, he may not get signed until July because they have to establish his residency outside of Cuba before they can sign him. And a lot of teams are out of international signing bonus money until July when they can restock as we've talked about earlier, the White Sox love Cuban players. They're building their they're building their lineup around them and their team. So they're a front runner. They're all, the Angels, got Otani. I mean, there's a lot of teams will be interested in this guy. It's too early for me to really like dive into the weeds if it's not going to happen until July. But let it be known, there's a guy out there. His last name's Colas. Colas. What's his first name, Jake? Oscar, you were all over it. Nice. Uh, one of the best prospects from Cuba in years is what they're saying. Yeah, so, I mean, that's exciting. He's 21 years old. Hopefully he is kind of a special player, and we can see him in a, a year and a half, two years. I don't know. Um, I mean, my, my dream is, Jim, in one of my nerdy out-of-the-park baseball leagues I play in, uh, there's a guy that has like all the dual threat dudes on his team. And I think we need a major league team to do that. And it's probably the Rays, but they need everyone who's Otani ish, who can hit and pitch a little bit to come up through their farm system, nurture them. Um, so, so that way that we have a team and we have a team in 2025 that everybody does everything. That's my dream. Little league. Yeah. Cool. Why not? Why not? Be, be an athlete. Left-handed catcher. Be an athlete. Yeah, we did get back to left-handed catcher. Great. That, that's what I want. Why aren't there any? Mike Moustakis is playing second base. He's a friend. We'll see him soon. Ooh. Barracuda. Uh, the other thing, the other conversation I want to do before we, we end this, Josh Donaldson, he has a four-year offer from the Twins. He's not taking it, and the Twins are likely probably out. And you said he's asking for a five-year deal. All the reports say he wants a four-year deal. I just think he doesn't want the Twins. He wants the Braves or the Rangers or the Nationals to pony up and match the Twins offer. Is I've read a couple things, and that was the vibe I was getting. We'll see. If he, if he gets a five-year deal, then that's it. But I think he's using the Twins deal as leverage and in the response, the Twins are saying, like, okay, well, screw you then. 
Yeah, I I don't know. I kind of read it a little differently. I don't think it's uh, there's any slide at Minnesota because I mean, hey, if you're getting paid, you're getting paid, and they're a playoff team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I I think it's more of a, hey boys, I'm I'm the last dude on the market. <laughs> I I'm the last two way player. Throw me in the three hole and let's have a party on the market. So I think he's just saying, hey. We we got about a month till spring training. If 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 any of you three teams want to add a little queso or throw in an extra year, I'll see you in spring training. Um, because I I don't know. I I think Josh Donaldson's in a good spot. If you're if you're the Braves and you're coming off last year's um, you know playoff failures, um, you know if they did so much at the start of this offseason, it'd be a nice bookends for them. Uh, does another team? Does does the old John Heyman Scott Boris mystery team show up? I don't think so. Um, do the Nats? Do they really want to run it back? Um, because God, that would be a lot of fun. Um, and if you're a Mets fan and Phillies fan, you'd kind of be saying like, "Fuck!" I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping the Nats would kind of chill and have their World Series slump year. But if they bring in Donaldson, they are very real again. So I don't know. I think Donaldson's just sitting back and saying, either hit four years. 110, 120, or whatever his number is, or he's saying throw in that bonus here and I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah, supposedly from one report from Feinstein, he has four years at 100 million from the Nationals, Twins, and Braves. And he's waiting for someone to go higher. I mean, he's, he's what, 34 years old? Getting a four year deal at 25 mil a year? Like, if a team goes higher, good for them. But, I mean, that's, that's a good contract for a 34-year-old. Uh, you know, he had a great year, but you pay $25 million for the 38-year-old Josh Donaldson? That's crazy. Good for him. Get the money. We uh, mark, mark the Ryu contract and the Josh Donaldson contract as the, hey, we're out of players. Let's give out risky, injury-prone contracts to good players because yeah. that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. John Heyman's... Who's it going to okay, be, Jim? Where's okay, he going? I, I care about ballots again because John Heyman's just came out. Oh, yes, your guy. I actually, like, I really don't care about these ballots, but he has Barry Bonds and not Roger Clemens. And he has Kurt Schilling. How do you vote for Bonds and not Clemens? Welcome back to the ballots, baby. I just made fun of people. I didn't make fun of. I, I don't care. I do not care about Hall of Fame ballots. Tell me the final result. Seems like you care a little bit. Well, no, I just like making fun of Heyman. I care more about right. Heyman's nonsensical nonsense than anything. All right, Jake. I think that ends this one. Very whimsical. We'll be back again this week. I think, I don't know what day we'll record it, and we still have maybe one more interview we can drop. But then next Monday, we will be doing a live show Monday night. So maybe we'll post something Monday morning beforehand. Maybe not. I don't know how we're going to handle that. Probably not. I think maybe we do the Monday. Well, this is a conversation for the back end. Maybe maybe the live show is, is the Wednesday post, and we do one earlier. Who knows? Could and try and get like try our best to get back to regularly published content from Talking Baseball. Thank you guys for following. Thank you to all the patrons listening live. I forgot to shout out some special patrons: Jordan Funk, Timothy Lakdawala, Jonathan Fernandez, and Miranda. Those are our most recent patrons. Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. We thank you very much. We are out of here as soon as I start playing the music. And goodbye forever. <laughs>